coming to the observance of our 69th anniversary. In a time when most people have a hard time doing the same thing for 69 days, here we are celebrating consistent and uninterrupted commitment to the liberation of black people for 69 years. I believe that human society stands under the judgment of one God. Revealed to all and known by many names. God's creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe. In the revolutionary Holy Spirit, which will not long permit men and women to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage in the rage of the powers when they struggle to be free. And in the violence and conflict which even now threaten to level the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader sent by God to rebuild the African nation Israel and to liberate African people from powerlessness and from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the Roman Gentile world. I believe. I believe. I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the black Messiah is born anew in each generation. And that black Christian nationalists constitute the living remnants of God's chosen people in this day and are charged by God with responsibility for the liberation of African people. I believe that both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism. And so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of African people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and programs of the black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. Welcome to the Shrines of the Black Madonna, where we believe in you being your best self. We invite you to partake in our worship experience. Come with an open mind and an open heart. Sing, dance, and clap your hands. Follow us on all of our social media platforms. Giving is an opportunity for us to build community, ministry, health, and best self. Tap into your greatness that God has already placed inside of you and share it with the world. We would love to see you more often. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get connected and stay connected online with the Shrine of the Black Madonna Virtual Village. Worship, join, learn, give, connect with us all in one place in just three easy steps. One, go to our landing page via our Linktree URL or QR code. 
Two, browse our selections and decide what you want to do and where you want to go. Three, click on your choice and we'll take you right there. Yes, in just three easy steps, you can worship, join, learn, give, all in one place. So get connected and stay connected with us online at the Shrine of the Black Madonna Virtual Village. Good morning, brothers and sisters. We come this morning to the observance of our 69th anniversary. Wow. In a time when most people have a hard time doing the same thing for 69 days, here we are celebrating consistent and uninterrupted commitment to the liberation of black people for 69 years. Wow. But our way has not been easy. We've faced withering resistance every step of the way. We've been ridiculed and misunderstood by the very people we are committed to help. For 69 years, we've been walking against the wind, swimming against the tide, going against the grain, roaring against the current, and walking uphill. And for 69 years, our members have shown all manner of faith, discipline, sacrifice, love, generosity, and determination. What we are today is the culmination of all that commitment, all that sacrifice, all that faith by all those people for all 69 of those years. So today, I want to begin our anniversary month observance by celebrating the remarkable commitment and sacrifice of our members, living and dead. Those who are touched by the revolutionary Holy Spirit, those who serve God with their whole hearts, those who came forth withholding nothing, those who entered by the narrow gate, forsaking success in the white man's world and dedicating their lives to building a world of our own. This morning, we want to celebrate and appreciate our members. The Shrine was founded during a time of rising expectations for black people. By the early 1950s, a lot of black people had evolved to the point that we were no longer afraid to stand up to white oppression. Our minds were made up and we would not be turned around in our efforts to attain freedom and dignity. The Brown versus Board of Education decision, the victory against Jim Crow and the Montgomery bus boycott, the explosion of anti-colonial liberation struggles sweeping across Africa and the proliferation of spontaneous protests against white supremacy sprouting up everywhere all worked together to produce a generation that expected change and were literally willing to die to attain it. The revolutionary Holy Spirit was sweeping across the black world. It was a spiritual movement and you could just feel it in the air. The problem was that the black church was not a compatible vessel for a spiritual liberation movement. The black church born in slavery was basically a coping institution. It was a pressure valve that provided a cathartic release from the crippling stress of black life in a white world. It provided hope in the promise of heaven in exchange for docility and passive acceptance of the status quo. This coping black church had kept us alive, but it couldn't free us. Our beloved founder, Jermo Jebebe Ajman, recognized this problem and founded a church that was designed to be a compatible vessel for a spiritual liberation movement. With the motto, nothing is more sacred than the liberation of black people, we established a new black church with a black theology. We rediscovered the African origins of Christianity and unveiled a black Madonna and child, all to create a vessel that could harness the spiritual power of a liberation movement inspired by God. But the plantation Christianity of the traditional black church had deep roots in the Negro psyche and most black people could not let it go and still can't. So the shrine never became a mass movement. It was famous for its creation of black theology and its influence on a generation of preachers. It was widely appreciated for its programs, services, and institutions. It was respected 
for the amazing things that accomplish with a relatively small amount of committed people. But it was not a mass movement. It was Jesse Jackson that said, the shrine is not a big church, but it has a big message and big influence. That makes it a powerful church. Black people have a lot of do nothing big churches, but I'll take a powerful church over a big one any day. What made the shrine powerful has been its, the commitment of its members. Back when we used to give out paper bulletins at Sunday worship, the bulletin stated, the shrine of the black Madonna is willing to give, is, is open to all who are willing to give total commitment to the liberation struggle of black people. That was our invitation. We were asking for a commitment. Today, a lot of people don't even know what commitment is. The world seems to be full of people who expect to receive abundant rewards with minimal effort. They haven't paid any dues or made any sacrifices, yet they expect the life they desire to just fall into their laps like a winning lottery ticket. And when it doesn't happen, it's easy for them to give up, quit, walk away from anything that requires a little extra effort and sacrifice. A lot of young people today confuse wokeness with commitment. Woke, being woke is a state of mind in which you are aware. People also confuse consciousness with commitment. Consciousness is also a state of mind in which you have knowledge. But having awareness or knowledge doesn't really matter much if you're not going to do anything with it. Commitment is not just a state of mind. Commitment is a verb, an action word. To commit means to set at work, to put in motion, to put your hand on the plow, your shoulder to the reel, to do something and to persevere to conclusion. Our scripture this morning is an example of the kind of commitment I'm talking about. At this point in Israel's history, they've been fighting to gain control of the promised land for 25 years. Did you hear that? They've had been fighting pitched battles for 25 years to obtain a land that God had promised them. Some people don't understand that just because God promises you something doesn't mean that you're not going to have to fight for it. In our scripture, the African nation Israel has almost completed the task of conquering the promised land. Only the mountainous re region where the sons of Anak, the giants, lived remained to be conquered. Now, these were the same giants that had scared them to death when Moses sent the spies out. The spies reported, we saw giants there. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. At this point, it's 45 years later, and the whole nation has come together to divide the conquered land between the 12 tribes. Caleb from the tribe of Judah, because of his age, reputation, and years of service, could have chosen any other land. But when he stood before the assembly, he didn't ask for the green pastures, the rolling hills, the lush valleys, the thick forests, the fruited plain, the flat and easy land that had already been conquered. Caleb looked toward the unconquered land of the giants and said, I was 45 years old when Moses sent me to spy out the land of Canaan. I returned and gave an honest report, but my brothers who went with me frightened the people from entering the promised land. For my part, I wholeheartedly followed the Lord my God. Now, as you can see, the Lord has kept me alive and well all these 45 years. Today, I am 85 years old. I am as strong now as I was when Moses sent me out on that journey, and I can still fight as well as I could then. So give me this mountain, and I will drive the giants out of the land, just as the Lord commanded. Caleb said, I'm 85 years old, yet I'm as strong this day as the day when Moses sent me out. My strength was then, as my strength was then, so is my strength now. Obviously, Caleb is not as physically strong as he was in his youth. But what he was saying is that his commitment was intact. His determination is unimpaired. His faith was unchanged. 
His steps might be slow, but his spirit was still strong. And he was as willing to fight for what he believed in as an old man as he was when he was a young man. So he said, Lord, give me this mountain. He chose to fight the giants. He was committed to finishing the job and complete the mission. That's why Moses said, Caleb has a different spirit because he follows the Lord with his whole heart. That's commitment. Our ancient African ancestors that created religion established universal laws based on a million years of observing nature. These laws are immutable and universal. That means they never change and they apply to everything. One of these universal laws is the law of cause and effect, which states that every action has a definite response or consequence. In other words, every action causes something to happen. The first thing this law should help us to understand is that nothing changes without action. If you want change, you have to do something. You have to make a commitment. Nothing happens without commitment. Old black activists had a saying that said the same thing. They said, progress rolls like a brick. It's had, it has to be flipped each time. That means somebody has got to put in the work. Somebody has got to pay the price for progress. There is no magic in the world. Change is a process and commitment is the price. The covenant says, I will be your God if you will be my people. That means for God to be active in our lives, there is a divine part and there is a human part. Commitment is the human part of the miraculous. Nothing happens without commitment. Commitment leads to sacrifice. Sacrifice leads to progress. And that's how God works in the world. The sooner we know and understand and accept this, the better. The shrine is built on the commitment and sacrifices of our members. We haven't had any rich benefactors that made our way, and we haven't received any grants or government support. We didn't inherit a kingdom ready-made coming down from the sky. Everything we've done and everything we've built has been the product of the commitment and sacrifice of our members. We were founded in 1953 when 300 souls followed our beloved founder out of St. Mark's Church. They rejected the limitations of the old black church. They rejected the wait on the Lord and Jesus gonna fix it after a while theology. And they boldly sought to establish a new black church founded upon the principle that nothing was more sacred than the liberation of black people. In 1953, that took commitment and sacrifice. They were saying, Lord, Give me this mountain. In 1957, when those same founders sought to purchase the building that became Shrine of the Black Madonna Number no. 1, it was accomplished through commitment and sacrifice. They sold dinners, held art shows, and organized dinner theater productions. The youth held balls and dances. Sister Irene Smith and Vivian Moore held elaborate teas and bridge parties. Sister Eleanor Hughes put on highly successful church bazaars. And she had seven children and put them all to work. On a regular basis, she would knock on our beloved founder's door in the middle of the night. And he would get out of bed to find her standing at his front door with snowflakes in her hair. And she had an envelope full of money that she and her family had raised. And rarely did those envelopes contain less than $1,000, and that's 1950s money. That's commitment. That's sacrifice. They were saying, Lord, give me this mountain. In 1973, when white folks told Coleman Young that it wasn't time for a black mayor in Detroit, he was rejected by the same people who had faithfully served for 30 years. He came to see Jeremoji. The next day, we had a meeting. And 500 people were set on the street, preaching, teaching, and registering people to vote from morning till night, every day until election day. Then on election day, we had more than 1,000 people covering every polling place in town. And with that formula, 
We helped to elect the first black mayors in Detroit, Atlanta, Houston, and Chicago. That's commitment. That's sacrifice. We were saying, Lord, give me this mountain. In 1973, two years before the official open, opening of the Atlanta Shrine, a group of teenagers just out of high school got into a raggedy vehicle. Mooga drove them from Detroit to Atlanta. But they were not just to drove into school. They were there to take our message to Morehouse, Spelman, and the entire Atlanta University Center. They had a hard time. They almost lost their minds from homesickness, lack of money, and harsh conditions. But they worked together and figured it out. And by the time the church officially opened in 1975, they had recruited more than 100 members. That's commitment. That's sacrifice. They were saying, Lord, give me this mountain. In 1974, the Philadelphia cadre had recruited more than 100 members, and they were anxiously awaiting the long-planned shrine in Philadelphia. But when the plans changed, Jeremoji asked them to relocate to Detroit. And they did. They had to be disappointed. They had to have hesitation about leaving their family, their friends, their jobs, and familiar surroundings. But they did. That's biblical. They heard the voice of the Lord say, leave your country, your kinsmen, and your father's house for a land I will show you. And they did it. That's commitment. That's sacrifice. They were saying, Lord, give me this mountain. In anniversary month of 1981, our beloved founder announced that we were launching a Beulah Land Farm program, a fundraising effort to buy 5,000 acres. Most people believe it would be done, but probably not in our lifetime. Then in 1999, when we purchased Beulah Land, the largest black owned property in America, it wasn't because anybody gave us anything. It was because of 20 years of committed work and sacrificial giving. Some of our members gave so sacrificially that the IRS called them in for audits. They just couldn't believe that poor black people were willing to contribute so much of their income to the dream of a farm that didn't even exist. They were saying, Lord, give me this mountain. That's commitment. That's sacrifice. One of the people the IRS audited was Baba Hodari Omari, who made transition in Ghana recently. A man whose whole life exemplified commitment and sacrifice. Rest in peace, brother. In 2000, the last days of Jeremoji's life, he was at Beulah Land. There were maps all over his bed and all over his bedroom floor. He was still feverishly making plans for things that he would never see. He had arthritis so bad in one shoulder that it was noticeably smaller than the other. The doctor told me that he had been in significant pain for a long time. He was slowing down, but he was still working. One day he wasn't feeling well and I asked if he needed to see a doctor. And he said, I'm not sick. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm just worn out. The next morning, he made transition with a smile on his face. That's the way we should all leave here. Worn out, used up, giving it all with a smile on our face. All of his life, he said, Lord, give me this mountain. That's commitment. That's sacrifice. Simply saying, nothing happens without commitment. Our institutions may look like they're made of brick and mortar, but these walls are made up of the commitment and sacrifice from generations of great souls. Great souls like Eleanor Hughes and Alice Strawler. Great souls like Hugh Henry and Louis Clay. Great souls like Oluwanza and Brother and Sister Sykes. Great souls like General Masai, Cardinal Olu, Cardinal Nandi, Bishop Ayile, Bishop Bae, and Colonel Sale. Bishop Benta and Bishop Tanu, and so, so, so many more from all parts of the country and from all walks of life. 
Our beloved founder said, the floor is red in all of our places of worship to remind us that we are standing upon the commitment and sacrifices of generations. So take your shoes from off your feet for the place upon which you stand is holy ground. Today we celebrate the institutions we have built, the service we have rendered, the hardship that we've shared, the miles we have traveled, the hours we have worked, the victories we have won, and the lives we have touched. Today we celebrate the labor that our members have given over seven decades in hot and cold, wet and dry, light and dark, in sickness and in health, in the pulpit and in the streets. And we say, thank you. Today we celebrate the culture centers, the Akibalan Academy, them Toto House programs, the technological centers, the community service centers, the Aquaba Center, the Law Center, the Black Slate, the Freedom Schools, the Learning Center, the Health Clinics, the Prison Ministries, the Pan-African Ministries in Liberia and Nigeria, the hurricane and, flood, hurricane and Flood Disaster Relief Programs, the food giveaways in three different cities, and our whole range of programs, classes, services, all of it has been made possible by the commitment and sacrifice of our members, living and dead. So today we celebrate what God has done through us, and we say, thank you. Moses said, Caleb has a different spirit, for he follows the Lord with his whole heart. For 69 years, the Shrine of the Black Madonna of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church has been a fellowship for different spirits who are willing to follow God with their whole hearts. We're not for everybody. We don't even need everybody. We are looking for those with different spirits, those willing to give total commitment to the God-ordained struggle to transform, unify, and empower black people everywhere. Those who believe that we can still do big things with God. Those who are not afraid to do hard things for God. Those that believe we are never too old to do our part. Those who believe that our best days are yet to come. Those who understand that commitment leads to sacrifice. Sacrifice leads to progress. Those who know that commitment and sacrifice is the price we pay for the life and the world we want. Those who follow God with their whole heart. Those who, like Caleb, are willing to take on the mountains and the giants facing black people in this day and time and say, Lord, give me this mountain. Amen. And I say. Shine bright, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world, and we will walk in the light. Oh, beauty. Come